That's right. We're back. Oh man. Big round. Big round. Let's do it. What's up everybody? It's Buffalo Ben 15 Golf back at it again. Oh man, guys, am I glad to be back. It has been a while to say the least. I have been at Fair Estate ever since late August and I just have not had any time to devote to these course vlogs but finally I've got a Friday night where I've got some time and uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, PGA management tournaments lately um, I've been doing a lot of uh, improvement on my game trying my best to uh, really get my swing dialed in and uh Avoid shots like this, as I remember so well from the first time I played here. I will say that. So, here we are, back at Beacon Hill. This is over three months since I've played here. And, uh, Oh boy, I remember it like it was yesterday when I hit crappy shots like that. But luckily it stayed in this time. As you can see, I was really worried about it that time. Kind of talked myself into it. That time it wasn't as bad, but still, that was that stunk. So yeah, guys, it's just been a wild ride for me. I've had a tough semester. Um, being in college is not as easy as many think it is. I really do try to treat it like a full-time job. I really do try to study um, just going to class and studying and reviewing for tests, all that combined for 40 hours a week, and uh, it's been working. And um, as you can see here, the uh, Wedgeworthy works here on one, feeling good. Always nice to start off your round of the par, and I was really happy to do so. I mean, as bad as that second shot was, I mean, you cannot hit a better first tee shot. I mean, straight out of the parking lot. This course doesn't have a range. That's the one thing I don't like about this course. Everything else about Beacon Hill I am a massive fan of. I love everything about this course. Um, uh, even these crazy long par threes as well. As I... I've done that on this hole before, and as you can see here, I got a little bit more wind helping me, a little bit warmer, and it hit a five iron really good. It's not going to be on the green. It's just short and right, or just long and then right, my mistake, um, but boy, I was, really, I was really happy to hit that good of a shot. As long as it's not wet. Also, you'll notice that those blue tees were a little bit warm today, but we were not going to um, play them from the off-brand tees. We were going to play them from the full blue tees like I played for the other two times I played here. So there you go. So up by the green, we've given ourselves a really manageable up and down chip here. Um, even for a front pin, I honestly did have quite a bit of room to work with on the green here. I do fly this a little bit further than I probably should have. I probably should have utilized the um, downward slope. I probably should have used a 50 and let the slope bring it down a little bit more, and I'm going to have a pretty testy little 5-foot, 6-foot putt down the hill here for a uh, par. The greens at Beacon Hill aren't lightning fast so these putts are nothing to be super worried about but um the movement that they have the slopes that they have just the the different ways that all of them move i mean this is one of the great things about this course the greens just have so much dimension which is not a given at public golf courses so really happy to be playing here today as you see here just a little bit of a push here. Something I've started noticing with my shorter putts, I'll often choke up on the shaft, which 
is not a bad thing because you do not want to have a bunch of loopiness in your stroke and choking up does help with that but i won't adjust my stance otherwise and my toe will be pointing up a four over a five any day so um that's something i really wasn't noticing when i was playing these rounds and you will see that even more spoiler alert in my next course vlog when i go back to mulberry hills a course in oxford that i have a terrible history with now this hole i've got a pretty mixed history with i've made as high as an eight on this hole and as low as a four and uh <laughs> we're flirting with it on that left side um with the hook there and it just hooks a little bit too much goes into the fescue taking a penalty drop now on a par five ouch i tell you we went right from thinking I was going to get two pars to start out the round for a minute, and now we're fighting to not get back-to-back -back bogeys here. Now we got about 220 yards over water. Got to carry about 190 yards to get over the water. Um, OB all the way around the back of the green and to the left. Um, this is um, big risk-reward par 5. If you've ever played Beacon Hill before, you hit a good drive, you can go for this in two. I did hit that three with really good, I just hooked it. So I was able to drop just oh. close enough to where I could pipe a five wood, get on the wow. back fringe of the green, and somehow hammered. we're going to have a putt perfect. for birdie, guys. Unbelievable. Oh my, God. my goodness. Yeah, look at that. How's that? for proximity from 225 yards out, let alone ball way below your feet and um, out of bounds on two sides of the green, water in front. How about it, guys? I had to go full Lee Westwood on that on that uh, five wood. Really had to kiss the ground. Really had to keep myself down. That was a very choppable, toppable, uh, shot there and I did a great job with it um, and uh, it's led us to a five foot par putt here and eh, maybe six but nonetheless I know yeah, good call, Ross. <laughs> what a par that was how about it that guy is amazing I can't make this stuff up guys yep. a par this with a par penalty we are feeling good Still got six more holes on the front to go. Like I said, this is one of the toughest front nines around. Really, it rivals Sylvan Glen. It's that tough. So off the hole four here, uh, sorry for the typo at the bottom of the screen. The white tee is supposed to be 380 instead of 38. I mean, pretty self-explanatory, but still. Apologize for that, but I hit a great drive down the middle. I wasn't able to catch it on film as I, would, I, I was playing through a threesome that was ahead of me. Um, so uh, thanks, guys, for giving me a little bit of audience pressure on hole four, but I piped it right down the middle. So now we've got um, a pitching wedge in here. Kind of took a little bit off of this because you do not want to be long of the screen. There is a bunker which slopes straight back towards the green that slopes from back to front. So you do not want to be in that bunker, especially with a fried egg lie. And beyond that bunker is just death and out of bounds and weeds and wetlands and what have you. Um, so did a really good job here to hit that 90% pitching wedge. Got ourselves a, another birdie putt. Tough to make it happen from 30 to 35 feet, though. But again, tap in par, keeping the par train rolling. Man, I wish I, I was a lip out away from even through four this day. Man, I am in the zone right now, I got to tell you. And uh, you guys can just see it in my walk. I'm confident. I'm, my strides are nice and long. I'm, I'm holding my head high. I'm... Doing everything I need to be doing, guys. This is really good golf. I mean, this is just about replicating my performance at Pontiac Country Club so far. My best ever uh, two-par round where I shot plus two, even though it ties my gross low of 74. 
And we're in danger of getting that killed instantly here on the tightest par four on the course. Oh, did you hear that? Three and bounce straight right. Wow. Kind of both lucky and unlucky because I think if it didn't hit anything, because this is a really tight tee shot as it is. Like, I mean, just look at that. Yeah, it's it's daunting. Uh, but uh, kind of both lucky and unlucky because if I didn't hit a tree, it would have kept down that left edge of the fairway, but it could have gone in the rough. It could have been in a tough lie. But because it hit the tree, I'm in the fairway but I'm a little longer out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what I would have rather had there, but I'm just glad I'm not dead because this tee shot is hard. Heck, I I would say I'm more lucky than unlucky. I, I got to tell you, the first time I actually ever played here, I hit a really good tee shot that was kind of on the same line, kind of a line drive to the left, and it hit a tree and bounced straight left, straight out of bounds, and I just... That's how the triple happened, and I was just so angry when that happened, guys. I mean, really, it was just a... That was shameful, uh, that performance. But, uh, you know, this is one of those courses where it's kind of like Devil's Ridge. You need to play it a few times before you really have a chance to score really well on it. Like, you just you just don't know where all the spots for trouble are just because you can't see them or just because the greens move so much, just because um, some parts of the bunkers are blind, those sorts of things. And uh, once you get the hang of it, though, it's all the much sweeter. That's right, the first ever par on five. How about it, It was playing it, easier today, but... I am not going to complain about that. <laughs> All right, guys. This round is starting to get really serious. One over through five holes at Beacon Hill at one of the toughest nine-hole um, stretches in the entirety of Metro Detroit. The front nine at Beacon Hill is a beast. I tell you, it... Uh, one of the toughest public Hit course the front nines that I've ever bit. played. And this is really the only easy quote-unquote hole, I would say, on the nine. A very short postage stamp par three. I just didn't get all of that gap wedge. I caught it a little thin, just spun a little bit too much, didn't roll out at all. So I've got a very long lag putt here, about 40 feet. I do okay with it, though. I get it to about three and a half, four feet. Little bit of cleanup though, especially on a day like this. I gotta be real serious with these. Every shot counts. Um, I know I can think of some bad days of golf where I wouldn't really think about this too much and one handed or half assed stance it or whatever, but I'm really taking my time with this one, uh, trying to put a good stroke on it, and it's just a terrible stroke. Such a bad Oh my day. god. If you had seen that figure eight, that belonged in the Winter Olympics instead of on the golf course. That figure eight was abs. Oh, man, that stroke was so terrible. I wish I could have that one back. All right, that's two over through six. No, just like Chubb said, don't worry about that. You're still in good shape. Are we still going to be in good shape after this tee shot? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Oh my goodness, how about that belted five wood down the right hand side of the fairway on holes five and seven are probably some of the tightest holes I've ever played in my life. Not just on this course, not just in the state of Michigan, but probably ever. Like these Beacon Hill does not mess around, guys. If you want to test your accuracy if you want to test your placement game get yourself over to beacon hill you will not regret it it's a very fun course very interesting holes 
a, uh, a little bit plethora of, of risk reward right, holes a plethora of real in. nice picturesque holes a plethora I think it hit a little bit of a tree really scorable holes this like hole, hole three this hole is ridiculously tight this like, course has just a little bit this of might everything be the tightest hole in metro detroit including the hell well, that is holes five and below. seven i mean yeah, there's more to it than that. this has got to be one of the nicest courses i've played in metro detroit it's a shame that I didn't find this place until I was out of high school. I was 18 years old the first time I ever played this course. Um, and uh, it's a shame that uh, I never got to play it for a m match or something because, man, what I wouldn't give to play this course more. I mean, really. it's. I mean, I understand that it's – not the choice course for a lot of people in Metro Detroit. I mean, I still have my favorites. I still got Devil's Ridge. I'll that that course will always have a special place in my heart. Devil's Ridge, Pontiac Country Club um, will always have a special that place in my heart now. Farmington Hills Golf would. Club. And, and I understand people. Yeah, I'm just there's, glad I didn't if you were to ask rain. Metro Detroit like golfers, the previous two times what their favorite uh, course is. Um, They'd probably say something like the like Orchards or Fieldstone. Way, yeah. um, and don't get me wrong, Fieldstone's great. I used to work there. Um, or Greystone or something like that. You know, it's, it's, it's a shame that people overlook places like this, you know? Like, sometimes you'll just find a course that speaks to you, and this course has done that to me. And uh, I love it. I would, um, if... Uh, this is one of my favorite three courses in Metro Detroit. I really like it. I know a lot of people don't, but it's really grown on me. And, you know, if you ever just love to see it, come across a person who's just calling you a redneck or calling you a calling you cheap for liking courses like Beacon Hill. And I mean, if it speaks to you, it speaks to you. I mean, this game What's great about this game is that there's so many different courses. No two golf courses are the same. No two rounds are the same, even on the same course. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, I wish I could play like this more. I wish every round was like this. Two over through seven. Got a great par there on seven, as I was kind of talking through it. And a great drive on eight. The best drive I've ever had on this hole. Um, but, yeah, guys, just... If you got a course you like to go to, if you got a go-to that speaks to you, master it. Become the become the the person who just takes it behind the woodshed and does a number on it, like I'm trying oh, to man. do right now. Oh, look at this go. shot! Oh, look at this one! <laughs> oh my gosh! Unbelievably good. Just go in. Just go in. Decent. How close is that? Took a nice kick. Oh my wow, god. That's how close it is. Wow. How's that hurt? For real? For real, dude? <laughs> that's awesome. That's wedge worthy right there, is what it is. Oh my gosh. We've done it. We've officially done it, people. Easily. We have Easily. followed up the 74, my best to par round ever. <laughs> with another round on the exact same pace. And I mean the exact same pace, guys. This is ridiculous. We have one hole left. A birdie gets us a 36. It would be back-to-back -back rounds where my front nine is even par. And we pipe the drive to start it out. I gotta tell you guys, the driver today was on fire. Every single driver I hit on the front was just great. I didn't miss a single fairway with my driver on the front. One, four, eight, and nine. All holes I hit driver, all holes I hit fairway. This is how you score. Keep the ball in play. Keep it in the short stuff. It really does matter, especially when you uh, are getting into the single-digit handicaps, I will say. So uh, 
Off to the second shot here. Got gap wedge in hand. Feeling good about it since I stuck the last one to a foot and a half. And this one I just thin. I try to get a little bit too much out of it. It's going to turn out okay. It's going to be on the green. I'm going to have a putt for birdie. Maybe not the best but idea. But it, I mean, it was. It didn't look good. I, I, I understand tried that. Tried to kill a gap But uh, yeah, just trying to get a little bit too much out of that. It was right on the border of taking pitching wedge. And as you guys are going to see in a ball, minute, quote unquote. I am going to just plop down another ball and uh, give it a shot with a pitching wedge just to see what it would have looked like. I mean, if you're if you're alone on the course, I don't really see the problem with this. I mean, I did say provisional ball before I hit it. Yeah, as you can as you can see, that swing is so much more relaxed. It's so much uh, so much better. Yeah. Um, I think that was the best now. Sometimes when the adrenaline's flowing, you want to take that extra club, but. Um, or, or, or not take that extra club, I mean. But oftentimes, the best policy is to take the extra club. So just a word to the wise. All right. Without further ado, here's the putt for the 36. 20-footer, right to left, uphill. Breaks a ton at the hole. For the par nine holes. Oh, my goodness. Oh my it hasn't just done that. Still, guys. Still, guys. Yes. Nope. Not allowed to be mad. Not allowed to be mad, guys. My goal was to break 40, and I did it. My goal. I played very steady golf. Didn't string together any two bad shots in a row or anything like that. Only you had one real bad miss with the putter. That's all it was, though. I'm there, guys. I'm playing better. I am playing better. I mean, do me a favor and just tell me that that front nine was magnificent. I mean... <laughs> This is the best golf I've ever played in my life. These two rounds, Pontiac Country Club and Beacon Hill, have been the two best rounds I've ever played in my entire life. Only missed one fairway, five out of nine greens. Real good stuff, guys. And this is the back nine. Through eight holes, we're two over on the back. Meaning that we're three over heading into 18. If we birdie this hole, we score our career low round of 73. It is still the same over par as Pontiac, but it will be a new gross record. And expect anything different. The driver straight exactly. down the pipe. And as you can see, All right, guys. in a bit of disbelief, this as I walk up 73. to the green after my approach shot, after I hit a uh, about a 90% sandwich, didn't quite get it there. The green does slope quite a bit from back to front, so it is pretty hard to get back there. To be honest, this was bordering on a yellow pin, a gold pin, being in the back um, at Beacon Hill. Uh, red is front, white is middle, and gold is back instead of blue. So, um, honestly, I was kind of uh, not expecting the white to be as far back as it was. So, 35-foot putt, I mean... I've hold putts this long. This is not out of the question, guys. We're going to give this a run. Here we go for the 73. Ah, just a little low. Great pace, though. Great lag putt. We will take that all day and run for the hills. And with that, we have officially, for the first time ever on this channel... Broke 75 Come in on. two straight rounds. Let's go. Woo! Let's go. This is college team level golf. That's how it's done. Oh, my gosh. 
I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. It's over. <laughs> Look at that card. It is just flawless. Eight out of 18 total greens and reg. Um, apologize for the getting those green totals wrong. It was four each, not five and three. Um, again, this was over three months ago. So, again, I've been meaning to make this video for a long, long, long time. 29 uh, putts, only one double bogey on 11. Counteracted it right away with a birdie. Guys, we're playing better. This is a major statement, and guess what? We're a five handicap now, baby. Let's go. I we, We've been over why the rating is a stroke lower than it is. I mean, I showed you guys the card and how the blues are like at the white yardage on GAM. But but anyways, guys, any way you slice it, today was amazing. Today would have been amazing in any condition, in any circumstance. This is how you play golf, guys. This is what I need to be doing from day to day. I know I, I, know I got it in me. I showed it to myself. This was actually the first time out of, outside of non-tournament play that I broke 80 in two straight rounds, two back-to-back -back rounds. And the crazy thing is I wasn't even thinking about that as I was playing. I was just thinking, just play the next hole well. Just, you know, it's weird. I didn't, re the score got so uncharted territory and I was able to tell myself to just not think about it that I just kind of lost track almost. That I kind of said, all right, What's the next, where, where, where's the pin on this one? Where can I give myself a nice putt? Those sorts of deals, guys. That's where my head was, and it worked. It worked like a charm. It really did. Um, and what's, and in the process of not even thinking about it, not only did I break 80 for the first time ever in two straight rounds in non-tournament play, but I did so with the 75 mark as well. I mean, you can't write this stuff. We got to keep this up, guys. And we're going to have a hell of a year. We're going to get to that four handicap. We're going to try out for Ferris's team next year if we keep this up, guys. More vlogs to come soon. I apologize for the long delay. I hope it was worth it. You're welcome. 74 again. Oh, boy, guys. <laughs> Thanks for giving me some love on that YouTube short. Got almost 900 views in two days. The one where it rolled back at me. <laughs> oh, man, guys. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe I just did that. Well, now I can. Now that it's happened. All right, guys, next vlog will be at Mulberry Hills, of course, that my PB is 85. So if I can keep playing like this, we are not just going to beat that. We are going to obliterate it. So we'll see what we can do. I'm looking forward to showing you guys what happened. Uh, it was a roller coaster of a round. It was, the course was in the best shape I had ever seen it. Um, so, yeah, guys, I'm looking forward to it. Mulberry Hills coming up. There's a Devil's Ridge one coming up that's currently in the works. And uh, some courses out in West Michigan, too, because I've been out here at Ferris State, and I've been able to visit some nice ones. All right, guys. Well, that's all for now. It's pretty late. I'm playing with an uh, uh, old high school teammate of mine tomorrow. Got to get some rest. But <sighs> it's going to be hard to sleep after rewatching this, to be honest. All right, guys. Take care, guys. This is Buffalo Ben 15 signing off. Have a good day, everyone.